The word photography essentially means drawing with light, or painting with light, as it were. Therefore, it can be said that the lighting is the primary language of photography as well as cinematography. Lighting determines not only brightness and darkness within the frame, but also tone, mood, and the atmosphere of the scene. As a cinematographer or as a photographer, you are looking at the world with only one lens, and you need to introduce a three-dimensional quality to a two-dimensional medium. You accomplish this by creating areas of light against dark or dark against light. And so, technically speaking, lighting has to do two things. To be able to capture meaningful images, the light-sensitive capture medium, such as film or digital sensor, relies on the light source to provide sufficient illumination, and you have to use the light source to enhance an illusion of three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional medium. Okay, that is what it has to do, technically speaking. What it can do, artistically speaking, is so much more. It can affect people emotionally. It can help you tell a story. But before you manipulate the light, you need to know what is the story you are telling. And so the next step, then, is to use the primary language of photography and use it as a painter would use the brush to paint the pictures in the dark and make the audience see what he wants them to see. And then combine it with strong composition and gesture to tell the compelling story and communicate artistic vision in the most compelling and appropriate way. As the legendary cinematographer Gordon Willis said, never forget the core rule of cinematography. A cinematographer is a visual psychiatrist, moving an audience through a film, making them think what you want them to think, painting pictures in the dark. Here is the first important concept to understand. If we start to think of the word light as euphemism for the word knowledge, then our definition of the word lighting in the context of visual arts becomes more clear. To illuminate or to shine light onto an object means to reveal some kind of information to the audience and therefore bring knowledge. Conversely, keeping the audience in the dark conceals knowledge, deepening the mystery. Therefore, it is necessary to control the intensity and the angle of the light sources correctly in order to get the most appropriate light for the story you are telling. You are, after all, a visual storyteller above everything else. It is one thing to see the scene as a normal person, as a civilian and it's quite another to see the scene as a visually proficient artist. As civilians, we typically only care about more information. Remember, we use a light as euphemism for knowledge. If you're trying to judge a scene as a normal person, as a civilian, typically you want as much light as it is necessary for you to feel comfortable in judging the scene. But as a visual artist, you don't want to give up all your secrets all at once. Sometimes you want to strategically deny information by casting parts of your scene in the shadow, giving your audience something to do, something to explore. As they say, obvious in art is often a sin, because art is only partly communication, the rest is delicate discovery. As a visual artist, you want to be strategic in what information you give up easily and what you keep hidden encouraging discovery from your audience. Of course, it all depends on the kind of story you're telling. If you are photographing a romantic comedy, you probably want more light in the scene than if you are photographing film noir, now do you? And that is why knowing the story you want to tell and how to light it is so important. After all, in our creative toolbox, lighting is often the storytelling tool we reach out to first. When a civilian, picks up the camera for the first time, he or she is likely to do what they have always done, approach the scene from the point of view of the civilian. For many, the first instinct is to add more light, always fearing that there is not enough light. But if you're trying to tell a more emotionally engaging story, then more often than not, what you don't light matters more than what you do light, because typically, the more light there is in the scene, the less drama there is in the scene. 
all the mystery is gone. Besides, it is contrast that makes photographing light so interesting. In fact, you can think of contrast as almost another character in your story, a role played by you, the artist. Is it a top light, light from below, spotlight, frontal lighting, three-quarter lighting, edge lighting, backlight, a complete silhouette, or some combination of these? These are just some of the creative choices you will have to make as a visual artist and these choices can have a profound impact on the way the audience experiences your artwork. These choices are not to be taken lightly and with time you will master them to become second nature to you. One could make an argument that it is the shadows which are more important than the light. One could say that it is the ratio between the light and the dark that really matters. In other words, it is the contrast that you should be thinking about. It's not so much about the amount of information, it's about the quality of information. Besides, once you master the quantity of light, that is to say how much to light, you will start to think about the quality of light and the direction of the light. That is what allows you to paint your masterpiece. Those are your brush strokes. Light makes photography. Embrace light, admire it, love it. But above all, know light, knowing it for all your worth, and you will know the key to photography. Light meters read, photographers interpret. Photos have no narrative content, they only describe light on surface. In other words, the camera captures light, our mind captures images and turns them into a narrative. The moment you take the leap of understanding to realize you are not photographing a subject but you are photographing light is when you will have control over the medium. Light is a tool to help you tell your story and the better control you have over light, the more effective you will be at telling the story you want to tell. The sweet spot lies somewhere in between the complete darkness and blinding white light. How much is the intensity of the light? At what angle will the single or multiple light sources be? Are some of the choices you will have to make, consciously or subconsciously. After all, you can't have light without a dark to stick it into. I talked about the word light as being used in visual arts and how we can begin to think of the word light as euphemism for word knowledge. And I talked about how choosing what to light and what not to light is important because you can control the amount of information the audience has. But you can also encourage exploration of what is in the shadows. In many of the films now being made, there is very little cinema. They are mostly what I call photographs of people talking. When we tell a story in cinema, we should resort to dialogue only when it's impossible to do otherwise. I always try to tell a story in the cinematic way, through a succession of shots and bits of film in between. If it's a good movie, the sound could go off and the audience would still have a perfectly clear idea of what is going on. Indeed, let me give you some examples. As cinematographer Roger Deakins reminds us, people confuse pretty cinematography with good cinematography. There is good cinematography and bad cinematography. And then there is the cinematography that is the right for the movie. It's a good reminder, but you should also remember that before you light the scene or hurry to use existing lights, Ask yourself these questions. Before you compose your picture, it's a good idea to ask yourself why are you doing it. Listen to your gut instinct and believe in it. In terms of framing the shot, there are a million places you can choose to put the camera and actually most of them turned out to be wrong. That is why they say that a secret to good photography is knowing where to stand. Also, ask yourself what is my subject? What do you want people to know? What do you want them to feel? 
And of course, what do you want them to do? Your job is to be the author of visual aesthetics, light, composition, gesture, etc. A cinematographer has to design and write a story, starting at the beginning and finishing it at the end using lighting as his brush, as well as deciding what stays inside the frame and what is left outside the frame. He must have a clear vision, design and objective way to approach every scene. Then, by lighting with your instinct along with your intention and setting your own level of excellence, you will find satisfaction. Cinematography is an ancient language of cinema, a way to communicate to the audience emotions of the story as well as giving them information. It is as much science as it is art. It's as much about technology as about art. It is as much about following the rules of composition as it is bending or even breaking them and writing your own rules. In your classic film noir, for example, the camera is used in two different ways. It has to express not just what's happening on the screen, but also has to express the psychological depth of problems that the characters are facing in the scene itself. It's telling a story, but it's also presenting a stylized viewpoint of abstract concepts. This includes the literal power dynamic between the characters in the scene, as well as the figurative power dynamic between the character on screen and some object such as building or car or anything that can represent the psychological state of the mind of that character. I showed you what light can do in a cinematography. But don't let that limit your imagination. If you're a photographer or a painter, you can apply the same principles and approach it very similarly. Some basic principles apply just the same, some are slightly different. But ultimately, you are a visual storyteller and light is a primary language you expect to use. Use it deliberately, use it wisely, and you will be okay. See you in the next one. Thank you.